items on rigging inspection. We're going to start with synthetic web slings. And I've got a uh, one inch one ply I and I sling here. Notice uh, we'll be looking at in information that uh, is con contained on the tag that needs to be there. Manufacturer, working load limit, type of material, rate of capacities, um, and based on the hitch type, etc. So and the stock code number for the uh, sling type so it's re replaceable when necessary. And very quickly on the inspection, once we've satisfied that all the markings are there appropriately, um, we, I start at the far end, right up here at the eye, and I use my hands and fingers to really figure, do we have cutting and crushing? Do we have hard plastic surfaces that might indicate melting and charring that maybe uh, don't discolor the webbing very much? But uh, so I'll work from the eye, go down both sides, open the throat up, take a look inside the throat, any broken stitching, I'll be looking for that, uh, or any damage. Cuts, uh, crushing, pinching, broken, uh, torn, snagged yarns and fibers. All the face, front and back. And then I'll work my way right down the sling quickly. Rotate, inspect, sweep with my eyes, left and right, back and forth. Come down, look at the end of the splice. I'm not losing any stitching there. Roll, roll. Continue on to the next splice and work my way right back up to the other eye. So I'll open that eye up, feel up underneath and see if I can feel any damage, any crushed areas, cuts, or heat damage, etc., or any chemical damage potentially, and look in the throat. So that sling should be in good shape, ready to use, ready to go. So we picked up a damaged web sling to help uh, put a visual to uh, some of the inspection criteria. And you'll notice uh, in this particular, we're going to use this view right over here. We have a significant abrasion right along the body surface and a little bit of peeling of the fibers and yarns there. Discoloration uh, is starting to look like a little bit of UV, ultraviolet ray degradation, but that would be the leading indicator uh, for, cause, for cause for removal. And the reverse side has a little bit. And I'll hold that so we can get a shot of that. A little bit of abrasion, but certainly on the front side, we would have suitable uh, damage there to remove that sling from service. We probably won't have an example for every one of the sling or rigging types that we're going to talk about, but uh, this one certainly is a great case study. Uh, we should be uh, very cautious about using damaged slings of all types because the breaking strength reduces and the working load stays the same. But ultimately, our kind of infield design factor has changed, and we get a little bit of dynamic loading, and we can blow right through that piece of gear uh, because its ultimate strength is actually reduced significantly. So we want to be very respectful of, the, uh, of what we do with the damage rigging and, and respond quickly. When we see that damage, we want to get it out of service. Let's talk quickly about synthetic round slings. Uh, I'll put this view up here uh, so we can take a look at that in the uh, close-up. But we, all, we have uh, tagging or identification requirements. Uh, the, these are polyester. There are some of other higher grade fibers that are stronger, uh, high performance round slings. But the bread and butter slings that we use typically in field are polyester. Um, well, so the polyester uh, will be there, and that's important to know for chemical reaction anytime we're working around chemicals in a facility. The vertical or rated load, rated capacity, name, manufacturer, uh, the code for the sling, and uh, normally we'll have its length and, and along with the stock code. So let's take a look. We've got a good marking on the sling, very much like our other sling type inspections, but we're going to take a hard look at the closing area for the sling, sewn down with the tag, generally. And I'm going to feel down through. What I want to feel is a continuous bundle of fibers all the way through the body because it's a continuous uh, rotation or wrap of uh, yarns that make up the body uh, dimension for in inside the round sling cover. So once in a while, we'll feel a little knot where they've tied the, the beginning to the end or some packaging tape where they've sort of gathered the yarns together. Don't worry about that. So, But we're going to feel all the way down 
and look at the sling, and I'm going to turn it, rotate it, drag and pull my pull the sling through my fingers hard. I'm trying to see if I can feel any hard plasticized area that might be heat damage or other chemical damage of some type. We're looking for any uh, separation in the cover. So as, as cut cover exposed core yarns is a retirement or removal criteria. The thing we get here that uh, we get away with a little bit is any UV damage on a round sling really isn't significant. It's on a, a flat web sling. So we're still looking for cut or broken fibers inside. Uh, we're looking for cut cover to exposed fibers, uh, illegible marking, chemical damage, heat damage, and other things that take uh, that we know might take uh, muscle away uh, from the sling. If it's sometimes slings get used hard and they get bound and get almost melted into a position, and you crackle them almost as you open them up, we'd have to suspect we have heat damage inside that sling. So need to remove that type of sling from service. So there we go. That's we've got round slings covered. Mm -hmm.